Welcome to Sheffield Manor Lodge. My name is Katie and I will be your tour guide for today. The site is run by Green Estate, a social enterprise committed to making a positive difference to local people and the environment through landscape and heritage. The archaeology of the site is very complicated with lots of different levels and as a result has proved very challenging to study through excavations. This is the oldest part of the Manor Lodge, dating from 1516 and built by George Talbot, the 4th Earl of Shrewsbury. But we have evidence that there was a smaller hunting lodge here before then. We found a payment slip for repairs to a lodge dating from 1479. This suggests that if the hunting lodge had to be repaired, then it must have been here for some time before that date. The question arises as to why it was built here. It is one of the highest points in Sheffield and on a clear day you can see the whole of Yorkshire, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire and this was really important to George Talbot as he owned the whole of Yorkshire, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire. In contrast, Chatsworth is built down in a valley looking up at the surrounding hills. This building is south facing and therefore the warmest part of the lodge. It would have been used for the bedroom of the Talbot family and also for any guests. At the base, you can see a dome, which looks as though it could be a cellar. We found evidence of food and drink here, which could have indicated that it was part of a kitchen. Although again, this posed a problem as Tudor kitchens were usually away from the main part of the living quarters. Further investigations revealed that this was the beer cellar for the Norfolk Arms pub, which was built on the site in the 19th century. The Long Gallery was where Tudors walked and took exercise during inclement weather, but also where they would do needlework, discuss current affairs and perhaps plot political events. This was the longest of its kind until Hampton Court was built. It's likely that underneath was the stables. During the 19th century, when workers occupied the site, we have evidence of houses being built here. Archive research carried out to check the census has revealed that there were some 250 families living on the site at the time. This is Wolsey's Tower, built in 1530. He stayed here on his way down to London to see the King. Reading the entry from his gentleman butler, George Cavendish, for November 1530, it states that they stayed in a tower that was newly built. Wolsey had been summoned by the king to answer to the crime of failing to get an annulment from the Pope. This annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon would have meant that the king was able to marry Anne Boleyn. It must be noted that when Wolsey arrived from York, he was ill. He waited here until the soldiers arrived from London to escort him to the king. He stayed in Sheffield for 18 days. The night before leaving, he sent for the apothecary, as he was so ill and was given a remedy to make him feel better. It did help, but he was not well enough to ride his horse. He was given a donkey to ride and sent off to Leicester, where he died five days later. Some say that he was poisoned by Anne Boleyn's supporters, but whatever the cause, he did not die at Sheffield Manor Lodge. This is a garderobe, which is a toilet. You can see here where the wooden seat would have been and there would have been space for two side by side. The area at the bottom would have been filled with straw and cleaned out regularly. Once a year, they would have sent out for the gong farmer who would come with his boy in a cart. The boy would have to go down into the pit and gather all the soiled straw and place it onto the cart. It was then distributed on the surrounding fields. In the 1570s, George Talbot, the 6th Earl of Shrewsbury, built two tall towers out of new building materials, red brick, which was very expensive and could be seen from a distance. The towers were 60 feet tall and would have been very imposing. Beyond this would have been the only part of the site which Mary, Queen of Scots, would have recognised. It is said it was her prison, but it is actually a gatehouse. You can see part of the wall surrounding the site and it would have housed guards to monitor those who came in and out of the lodge. Built in 1572, Mary would have been witness to the building and there is evidence that she had some influence in its design. She came with 50 servants and she was a queen and had to be kept as such. 
It would not have been big enough to house so many people, so it is suggested that the main lodge building would have been more fitting. Thank you for listening. I hope you've learned something new and we look forward to seeing you soon.